Hi, this is Sarah with Artful Videos. Today, we're discussing very popular claims about art that appear everywhere. For example, everything depends on your personal feelings because art is subjective. Well, that's just squares. My five-year-old could do that. If someone can put a urinal in a museum, then anything can be art. This and more in today's episode, Art. It's all subjective, right? First, we must understand that something being art and something being pleasing to look at are two different things. You can look at the stars and think, wow, the sky is really beautiful tonight. But stars are not art. Astronomers surely find beauty in the stars, but their subjective experiences, aka personal opinions, do not define astronomy as a scientific field of study. Same goes for art history. Art history does not study individual subjective experiences, but historical evidence and verifiable information. Being an art historian is a bit like being both a detective searching for clues and also a lawyer using the evidence to prove a point. In art history, clues and evidence are often documentation, like writings and statements by artists, records of commissioning, primary sources contemporary to the artists, and contextual information about the culture and society in which the artwork was made. Humans don't live in a bubble. We live and learn together. Why artworks look the way they do depends on shared human biology, historical circumstances, what was popular in a period, and collective cultural ideas. And that is what art history studies. Why does something look the way it does? For instance, why are you letting those puppies play around those very expensive paintings? So what are the differences between a scribble made by your five-year-old and an abstract painting you can find in a museum? Well, let's consider Jackson Pollock. As we said, art historians look for evidence and statements by the artists themselves are great places to begin. What did Pollock say about his drip paintings? Here's a quote. On the floor, I am more at ease. I feel nearer, more a part of the painting, since this way I can walk around it, work from the four sides, and literally be in the painting. This is akin to the method of Indian sand painters of the West. In this quote, we find awareness of the pictorial tradition and intent. There is also the issue of innovation. Someone like Pollock was redefining what a painting could do or be. A five-year-old can create a visually interesting painting, but it will not take into consideration the tradition of painting, what a painting is, or how it responds to its own time. The five-year-old will not ask theoretical questions the way many abstract artworks do, or engage the viewers intellectually. I'm not saying that children's art is uninteresting or worthless. Far from it. But the comparison between children-made art and an abstract painting in a museum is like comparing this with this. For the same reasons, not everything is art. Your cell phone is not art. The apple you had at lunch is not art. My cat is not an art, no matter how hard she tries. Pretty much any object you're looking at right now is probably not art. So is anything placed in a gallery art, like this urinal? This question is often brought up when encountering abstract paintings, ready-mades, or found object art. And it's not a new question. Here is a 1914 cartoon poking fun at early 20th century art. The modern artist is blindfolded, throwing paint onto the canvas, wielding a fencing sword with a paintbrush attached, painting with his foot, and finally proclaiming to have created a painting of a kneeling woman that looks like a bunch of splotches. So why is this urinal a work of art, but not the one in the coffee shop down the street? Because found objects, literally stuff the artist found out in the world, have undergone an intentional transformation that changed their status and how we are supposed to engage with them. This work of art, called Fountain, was created by the artist Marcel Duchamp. He wanted to focus on intellectual and conceptual interpretation, rather than the physical and material aspects of the object. And this idea isn't some modern mumbo jumbo. You know who else wanted to focus on intellectual and conceptual interpretation? Michelangelo. Yep, from Michelangelo, the concept took priority over the actual image. And yes, Michelangelo's conceptual approach was also criticized by people in his own time for being unrealistic and improper. But we'll save Michelangelo for another day. The thing is, 
Artists have always enjoyed pushing boundaries. Modern art often confronts your beliefs and assumptions, including assumptions about what art can be. To understand why something looks the way it does, it's necessary to understand the artist's intention and the artwork's place in its cultural context and within the whole history of art. As I said, playing an art historian means being somewhat of a detective and somewhat of a lawyer. You do not need to like it. There's a difference between enjoying a work of art and appreciating a work of art. There is always something to be gained by understanding why someone made something the way they did. Even if you dislike the way it looks or even makes you feel, it's worth understanding why art historians consider it important and worthy of display.